Uh, yes, they look like this when you buy them. <laughs> and there's like 10 in a pack. But they're like, I don't know, a couple of dollars per pack. Yes. And so with the big ones, what I have found, it's, it's, it's nice if you get it lined up how you want it to start. Because if you start crooked, they can sort of get out of control. <laughs> and so, you know, that's a guess on, on the overlap, and then this would be where I would come back. Uh, if it's a sharp blade, it, it cuts pretty easily. And I, I push down pretty hard, it doesn't mark the blades. I would actually probably reuse that um, on something else, but I usually will have. Uh, you can't let it dry out. It'll start to get crispy if it dries out. But you know, you have like 15 minutes where you could get another piece ready and add that to it. So, my opinion about these all over decals is that similar to how I was working with this, these are just the first layer. And so, I'm not, I'm not as concerned about wrinkles. I want to get a lot of them out, but. I will come back with this and add, probably add some poppies to it um, as, as a layer. And so this is just the first background layer. And if there's some wrinkles, that's okay with me. So with the colored decals, you're limited to fire and temperature once you put those on. Well, yes and no. These, I think this is a little much. Like, that's kind of a lot of color. Um, so typically, I'll over fire these so that they end up blending in with the glaze, they're a lot more subtle, and then I come back and bring in brighter colors later on in smaller quantities, because I feel like this is just a little too much color for what I'm after. But if I overfire this, it becomes more of a, sort of a flat. But by overfire, you're like talking 04? Yeah, I'll fire, well, I'll fire this to 010 instead of 017. And so the, the pinks will be sort of a, a flat, It'll be a pink, but not this bright pink. The yellow might burn out completely, and it'll just be left with the outline. Greens and blues tend to withstand temperature pretty well. Pinks and yellows tend to burn out really quickly. Justin, see, you're going to fire, you're going to wood fire some student work. But time constraints, we need to, need to do it within 30 hours, so it's going to be disc fire previous to wood firing. That dry, is it, it's like putting it on greenware, is it? In that instance, with, with the way you, you're set up, I would, I would stick with these laser transfers and have your students put them on greenware. Then you'll bisque fire them and they'll be on there. And you just load them in. I would stay away from color altogether for that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, to be twisting and pulling sideways, and I can end up with uh, hairs that don't fall together very well.
so that you can tie it off. These are really floppy. And you can do this a couple different ways also. I can hold this and I can carefully comb out all of this wool from deep in there. So that's like that undercoat? That's like the undercoat. Or I can work on doing an extra good job in my gluing and it will be even more of a mop brush. See, I can comb this out until all I get was just this tiny little bunch of guard hairs and then that would give you a different feel of the brush. So if you want a brush to hold a lot of blades, for instance, is it going to have as much of that under fur as you, you can? want as much of that under fur as possible. That is your mop.
So I'm making myself now a panel. Um, I don't know if you can see how thick this is at the top. I'm guessing a generous one eight inch offset top and bottom. And I'll mark uh, six divisions here that I've looked down on from the top and use as a guide. So I'm going to come in and just drag this sideways and come back out. So it needs that straight curly, straight curly. And on the alternating panel, I'll just jiggle it up and down so that it makes kind of a kind of hearing bone. Yeah. I can be fairly soft and still be successful with this if it gets too awfully soft. Um, it tends to reattach itself, especially on the straight cut, and then you have a mess. those you know um, marker lines that told me where where to make the cuts. And they're always a little irregular but that's actually I think kind of nice. And then the same kind of expansion holding the rim in place, only touching the rim on the outside. And I use quite a lot of water on the inside because uh, too much pressure in here will cause the pot to grab hold of your hand and then it will be way off center. Here I don't have to work at making the dancing rim because um, the, the thickness of this remaining clay that's now diagonal um, tends to cause that part of the pot not to stretch quite as much. So it's just going to translate that strength for relative deepness of the side of the pot. Now, if, if your OCD-ness would say I really would prefer to have a straight rim, I mean, that's, of course, an easy thing. We would kind of you know, fix that <laughs> here and throw it. And here's a good example of how, how I like to see the, the interiors of these. I make a really sharp, dramatic spiral, and then that remembers the spiral. Is that not very very beginning when I'm uh, just after I open, I run my finger down through there, give it a, a good part. Just laterally, uh, uh, yeah, laterally coming out and up. 